a little late 70s Hitachi uh, TRK 5280 or TRK 5280E to be exact because this is the European model um, this is a, a fairly sort of basic um, general sort of late 70s machine I think about 77 78 these were made um, this has come from a friend who wants me to give it a once over he picked this up quite cheap so he quite liked the styling of it um, so overall in pretty reasonable condition uh, it's a tiny cosmetic mark here and there it's a bit mucky wants to clean the front um, tuner dial the actual uh, plastic on the front is a bit fogged up that might clean but I don't think I'll get it any clearer than that I think it's just the age of the plastic that's done that um, I did some preliminary tests on this and uh, because I was using my mains lead for something else um, I used a 9 volt adapter because it's got a 9 volt uh, native center input on the side and um, it did work and it's got um, a couple of um, interesting problems I think that will be worth just capturing on video because although in terms of the mechanism and everything this is very similar to the uh, 8080 that I co uh, covered before um, I think it's actually pretty much an identical mechanism there's a couple of interesting problems that I think the diagnosis of which uh, will be worth catching on camera if it would help anybody else um, I've just tried to power this up from the mains and I can hear the transformer humming but it's absolutely stone dead um, that might be I wonder if um, because I've used the 9 volt socket on the side the uh, switching contact which will be in there um, might be dirty and I've probably just disturbed it because if I put in the 9 volt supply it works now the um, belts and mechanics on this are actually working I'm not going to say that they're working brilliantly and we've got a bit of a squeaky door there but um, but it is operating and um, these massive switches on the top are quite amusing um, one of the faults it's got is that um, only the right speaker seems to be actually working now if I turn the balance control to the left and turn up the volume it's there but it's very weak and I'm not hearing any kind of scratching or anything around the pot so it could be something as simple as uh, a dirty contact in a switch or a pot but um, it might be something a little bit deeper uh, which will be interesting to diagnose um, the bass and treble well the treble definitely appears to work I'm sure if I manage to uh, catch a little bit of a radio station somewhere just to just to hear it Bass and treble don't have a massive effect apart from right at the end of their travel, so they're fairly simple. But I feel like that is working. It's hard to tell on that side if it is having an effect, but yeah, we're weak on that speaker, and I don't think it's the speaker. Um, I will check that, but I feel like it's probably something in the preamp or lineup stage. Uh, so let's get this to bits, see what condition it's in inside. It's another thing, the very end of the aerial. There's a little exposed screw thread there where there must have been a little plastic end on there. I'll see if I've got something that might go over that because the rest of the aerial is in pretty good condition. Um, I'll see if I've got something that we might be able to screw onto that just to finish it off. So let's disconnect that, see what it's like inside. I have got the service manual for it as usual. We haven't checked the battery compartment actually. Oh, that's gross. So. <laughs> yeah looks like um, it's had a battery leak at some point so that's going to want to wash out uh, okay so um, that is for the antenna I'm sure it's not marked but it's got to be so these silver screws uh, got to be those and don't see anything in the battery compartment looks like they will get the back off oh there's one down there as well right next to the DIN socket That one's a short one as well. Right, as usual for the Hitachis, there are some connectors inside that I'm seeing. So let's push the screws out of the way. They're the same. So on this side, are they marked? 
now they're only marked with the uh, names so there's one labeled p3 down here that is white one labeled p1 uh, that is blue and one labeled p2 that is black so that should be from the antenna Maybe on the side you've got power points here uh, p8 is red and then there's a flat connector there f1 that is black and that's it that's the lot so actually not too bad inside you can see where that uh, yeah one of the springs has gone so that's where it's had a battery leak there's a bit of muck from that but other than that it's actually not too bad interesting for a smaller unit that it's uh, two-way speakers i don't think i quite paid attention to that and also it looks like the handle just lifts out so uh, i need to make sure that goes back in the correct way so let's just hook up the bench power supply at nine volts so i can hear that speaker popping same as the other one is when the play button's pressed so i think the speaker itself is fine none of the controls on this by the way have got center detents it's a little bit weird but yep that's working so of course we've got no antenna now but uh, i just put a tape in this just to check that this works Pressing the mono button doesn't bring it back to the left speaker. I can hear it changing the phase of the sound slightly. Again, normal and chrome doesn't appear to affect the playback EQ. It's probably just recording bias, but nothing on that side. And same for the radio. There's two wires here, red and black. I'm not sure what they are. Look on the diagram. They just seem to be flopping about a little bit. I don't know if there's somewhere where they should kind of live properly. The switches are quite easy to access. So I think we'll start with just giving those all a clean and see if that brings back um, any of our controls. Actually just looking around here, uh, I can see there's some gunk probably from the battery leakage that's uh, left some marks on that board and there's a capacitor here uh, this big Nuchicon the bottom of which and the lead of that looks awful and I realize all these capacitors here as well are all kind of in line of it and mm, that is attached but it was strangely warped um, these two chips here I think will be our amplifiers so that's a little bit of a concern that where the um, evidently the battery leakage uh, has gone onto the board there probably outgassed to the board the amplifier section is right in the firing line so um, we'll have to go through that and see uh, if there's any damage there just having a bit more of a look around this board I can see here there's some corrosion on the traces next to this uh, Panasonic capacitor here and I've been told that these ones with the purple jackets that they did use can be troublesome and there's definitely something going off here because I can definitely see some corrosion so again that could be suspect it does feel like it could be a capacitor issue um, as I said I will give all the switches a clean just to um, isolate that as an issue but um, yeah that's um, that's not looking great there Something else I've just noticed as well on this, uh, there's provision for a line in and line out socket, um, but they're not actually fitted on this. I guess the DIN connector, of course, has got the line in line out, but there's actual provision for phono sockets there. So I wonder if that was for either a different model or a different region that would have had the phono sockets instead of the DIN connector. Um, I've cleaned switches that uh, I can see, and that speaker, definitely yeah it, it's popping so it's working so the amplifiers functioning the speakers functioning um, 
I do think we've probably got capacitor issue here because I said that's not looking too clever. I think I'll probably do this in the opposite order to what I usually do. I think I will pull the board first and we'll look around this board. I'm going to do some cleaning, try and solve this problem before uh, I go uh, messing about with the tape deck because we know that's basically functional to begin with so there's no surprises there so far. Um, but I think we'll try and get this amplifier section working first otherwise doing the tape deck sort of pointless. All right, so I spent some time reading through the uh, circuit diagram and the service manual here, and just going over this and doing some tests yesterday. I can definitely prove that the problem we've got comes before the uh, volume, balance, and tone controls, um, but after the mono switch. Um, I can do that because looking at the diagram, we can actually see the point at where the line out, which is on the DIN connector there, um, actually comes before uh, the uh, volume and everything, uh, volume balance and tone controls, but comes after the uh, line amp stages. And um, these two chips that are shown here are actually, as it says, uh, one of two and two of two. Um, they're actually, um, oh, sorry, no, it says half, doesn't it? So um, half of that, half of that. The reason it says that is because that chip is actually this little couplet here um, between all these two capacitors. So we've actually got a couple of these. There's one that is used as the preamp for the uh, tape deck and is also used, I think, when recording for the internal mics. And then this one is used as a line amplifier. So it's kind of an op-amp circuit, I think, but in this sort of flat package. What makes it slightly awkward is, unlike a standard chip like these, for example, you can't easily probe from the top. Um, so you have to kind of look at um, either the bottom of the board or at other points around it. Now these use um, these printed resistors quite a lot throughout this design. There's only a few actual um, component resistors used. And in each of these printed resistors on the ends of them, uh, there are little uh, points where you can uh, put a probe in. This scope probe I've actually hooked up not to my scope, but to, if I turn it on, um, my little sound monitor uh, the top here so I can kind of go around and listen and I found something quite strange um, I recorded a left right test tape um, and I tried this with the radio as well but I recorded a left right test tape to get a clear left right definition and um, for some reason the uh, weaker channel um, seems to swap at the line output I can't fathom why um, but also interestingly I'm able to pick up um, some of the uh, signal in certain areas from the actual tops of the capacitors I am going to have to take this board out I think and loosen some of this wire and see if I can get to the bottom because we know that some of these capacitors need to go anyway but just looking at the diagram and I hope that's coming across okay um, I've printed this because I wanted to highlight where the uh, capacitors are that I think might be an issue. I'm hoping that it's not the actual chip itself because that's going to be fairly unique to these machines and it would need a donor machine to get a whole chip. But if it's just capacitors, they're of course general parts. Um, so the uh, left and right uh, sides of the uh, source selector switch here, so the tape radio uh, and sleep switch, um, are here and the um, mono switch is actually coupled right off uh, that before the line stage so if I were to play the tape which is right at the beginning so it might just need a, a head start if I actually with the mono switch off if I actually probe at the switch itself Hopefully you can hear. Right. 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 There's the right. Left. 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 Right. 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 Left. Left. Hopefully you can hear that, that they're equal volume. And there's actually a convenient place I can pick that up on the board, which is right at the end of these two resistors. Uh, are 417 and 418. Right. Right. There's a right. And there's our left. left. Both equal left. volume. Um, and if I go further around the circuit, uh, as I said, I'm able to pick up 
um, from some of the tops of the uh, capacitors actually and just looking at the numbers 444 and 446 that is um, they're on the output of the uh, line stage here so we've got um, a capacitor on each side coming from its own pin then we've got this feedback between two capacitors we've got a capacitor on the input uh, of the line in and then this one is actually this leaky thing here uh, which is on the six volt line because there's a six volt supply which is paralleled in between the two and there's a, a filter capacitor there across those two now we know that needs changing but that's of course parallel to each side as a supply so it's not going to affect one side and not the other if that was faulty and the supply was dipping it would affect both uh, equally so as I was saying um, 444 and 446 coming out of this one I can actually pick up um, quite loud left 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 the left, left channel <laughs> But when I go to um, the same pair, right, 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 weirdly for right, the right, 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 there's a tonal difference, whereas these are quite loud and seem to match. Right, right, That's a little right, bit quieter right, and fuzzy. Right, and that one's right, thinner right, and a little bit quieter right, still. Right, so um, on the, these two are the outputs. And I think that 100 microfarad don't think we can pick anything up off the top of that one uh, but I think that is that one that comes off of pin 1 and pin 14 so there is a different um, left, left, left. difference going on there so it could either be something to do with the actual um, outputs or it could be something to do with this feedback circuit or one of these and if we actually turn the volume up on the actual machine only really the right left. channel works <laughs> but left is loudest here left left which is so weird right. 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 just to show as i mentioned i actually forgot to demonstrate this that the the, the kind of weakness of left and right appear to be swapped uh, the din connector so the bottom of these two resistors actually correlate to the outputs on the din connector left 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 that's left Right is weaker, right, right. but right is the only one that's actually making it through to the speaker. So I wonder if we've actually got two faults going on here. It may be that we've got um, something weaker in the line stage, but in the power stage or coming into the power stage, uh, we might also have probably a bad cap somewhere that's um, on the power side, not making it through to the speaker properly. Right. 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 So if I sort this out, it might make the right stronger. <laughs> but um, still might not solve that left issue so yeah we've probably got uh, two issues going on here right so I can see four screws I think hold this board to the chassis so we can get to the opposite side uh, and then there are some clips oh there's another screw right down there there's actually another two screws oh this is annoying it looks like we've got to remove the knobs for the uh, base treble and volume and actually there's two screws right down here it looks like that whole assembly goes together those two actually go into the framework so they can go back it's these right down here okay so obviously we've got a lot of wiring at the side here which if we undo might make this a bit easier just going to undo my power supply for a moment and there's also a connection here in the tape head that it's tangled up here and this is probably from the motor
that gives us good access to the deck as well that's good so yeah this red and black wire may well be from the motor so we've got red to the right at p5 black at p4 let's just undo those for the moment oh that's great gives me loads of access yeah so it's exactly the mechanism i was expecting the belts actually apart from that one which i think is the counter belt that feels awful um they just seem all right so far um yeah it's just really that counter belt that uh that feels terrible tires don't look too bad what if they've been changed at some point so it's nice that it's marked as well on the back because i was worried it wasn't going to be and that was going to make it really difficult this also makes it more practical to clean uh the pots as well getting in from here yeah this is c433 Ooh, don't like that <laughs> 17 ohms resistance 32 percent v loss and only what 320 nanofarads it's supposed to be a one microfarad so yeah that's the one that had all glue along the bottom that was yeah 443 so um that ain't right my meter's nearly falling off the bench Let's just try this one. I think this was 445. Oh, that's different. That's a 3.3. What is this? One microfarad. Okay, that's actually correct. Um, v loss, yeah, a little bit. We'll compare it to a new one. But yeah, that one microfarad is definitely scuppered. So that was, there's actually a misprint on the back of the board. It says 433. And further up it says 433 so that should actually be 443 it's correct on the other side of the board so 443 is here uh, yeah it says 3.3 and uh 4.5 oh no sorry uh 443 one microfarad 25 volt 445 3.3 25 volt um and they seem to be okay on the other side so that's the first one that isn't quite right the input actually uh, to the uh, line is also a 3.3 425 so we should maybe look at that as well so we'll look at 425 mm, no that seems okay a little bit over if any then 3.3 So 3.3 seem healthy. The one microfarad, maybe not so much. So the other one microfarad there. Four four four. Let's pull that. That sounded okay. Yeah, that seems much better. <laughs> I've got loads of these, so I'll replace them anyway. But definitely that one microfarad wasn't right, was it? okay bit of an update so uh, a few have been changed around here and remember left, left, we had left, left, left. the left one there and they sounded equal the right ones sounded progressively worse right 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 well now they sound to me left, left. much better right right so that should mean that if i just move the ground point the right, right. Left. left right right yeah left. so the outputs at the DIN connector now left left right are even so our line stage is working correctly uh, which is good because that means that this IC is fine so I haven't got to worry about trying to find one of those because that was a concern so I think so far in this area we're okay so I think the next part we're likely to find a fault is in the power amp so yes there were definitely two uh, issues going on there one was kind of masking the other we've got that even so now I need to look at the power stage oh flipping heck I've been doing this all day but problem solved um, sent me on a bit of a goose chase this because it was nothing to do with anything in the uh, power section of that uh, amp chip at all 
Remember I pointed out that this capacitor, uh, which I changed, which is one of these purple jacket Panasonics that unfortunately are known to leak. That one had shown signs of corrosion. Um, it was foreshadowing because this one <laughs> was the same kind of capacitor. I know this one and this one are too, so they weren't checking. This one had actually corroded a trace. Find something to point with. Um, that'll do. Uh, no, no power's on. Um, it corroded a trace down here. In fact, let me zoom in and point it out. So just here you can hopefully see that um, I've added a 10K resistor. Um, you might see it says R430 there. And I did mention earlier that this uses those printed uh, resistors. So there's R429 and R430. Uh, just around here and there's they're both 10k resistors both printed resistors and this capacitor um, had shown a little bit of leakage and it had corroded the trace running from the end of that capacitor down to the little through plated via because this is actually a through plated board for 1977 1978 um, this was uh, fairly advanced I'd say for a consumer product and a relatively sort of inexpensive one um, and it's actually been quite difficult my Paco desolder gun's just not been working very well today I'm not really sure why but it struggled a bit with this board um, partly because the despite this being a through plated board as sort of modern ones are the adhesives that they use on the the tracks and the pads are not um, as strong as a modern one so it's delicate it's easy to lift traces and I almost did in a couple of places with this but anyway um, some corrosion on this trace had broken the link from this resistor down to its uh, through hole there and you think well what has this resistor in the middle of the board got to do with anything well there are a few things around this bearing in mind that the um, tone and volume controls are at this end of the board there are a few things that are a bit scattered around uh, rather than being together in pairs and so I've had to do a lot of tracing back and forth and um, there's a little capacitor that goes up to the treble control up at the top and there should be uh, a trace from the back of that resistor going up to that little capacitor and that link was open or very 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 nearly open it was very high resistance and um, I don't think if, if if it is sort of copper it's incredibly thin that's used on these prints because I tried to sort of scrape the the top um, solder resist off the top of it and see if I could expose some copper to solder to and it just it's just gone so I've basically opened that link completely and then um, put this resistor through the holes and there's a couple of points on the bottom of the board where I was able to solder that across and remake that connection metered it back out again and lo and behold we've now got the connection again from that end of that 10k resistor to the little tone capacitor so it's actually the um, audio going from the uh, line stage it first goes into the uh, treble control then the bass control then the volume control so although it was working at the output of the line stage it was then not going to the next point and I figured that out by um, using the audio probe that I've been using against the um, treble part and one channel I could get and one channel was dead but when I go to the um, line outputs they both work so it was really bizarre trying to find where that chain had got broken or gone very high resistance and it was because the old capacitor that was here leaked and corroded that trace and opened it so it's nothing to do <laughs> i nearly removed one of the chips and all sorts um i'm glad i've sorted it you know I'm, I'm not mad about it but sometimes these things just take so much um hunting to try and figure out well where does that go where has it got lost and trying to find the component numbers and also i think there's a couple of mistakes on this on the legends on this because there are i think two uh which one was it c502 and r502 i think there's two of them <laughs> uh, <laughs> which really doesn't help um and one is yeah right up here by the 
the radio section so you think there's that wrong one but now I had to follow the traces on the other side of the board and do it so anyway if I just prop this up a bit it's only got radio interference on but if I put on the power turn the left channel on it works turn the right channel on it works just the same so now it's properly working both channels so tomorrow I think we'll replace these two because I don't trust them one bit um, I think I've got slightly different but I think I've got uh, still a couple of 1000 microfarad uh, caps that I can put in there I think these are the last two of my little Samuel ones but I think I've got some Panasonic's that can go in there so we'll do those tomorrow I'll check for any others uh, everything here I did pull quite a few things uh, and test them and they all tested fine so it's just I think even these would test fine but they're leaking so um, they're corroding the board um, so they've got to go so I think what I want to do next is see how much of this chassis and the speakers and everything potentially I can get out because I really want to wash all this bottom half out but uh, I'm not sure I can see down in the um, bottom down there there's two black screws that hold the bracket on for the balance control and the switches here so it'll mean that uh, this knob needs to come off and I think the tuner knob needs to come off as well and then the chassis I believe uh, has the uh, dial cord and everything all sort of strung on there um, now we know that board will lift out that way I have to try and work out where the needle is there for the tuner how does that come out well let's just lift it straight out I'll flip this over in a second if I can and try and show this we've got some wiring that's caught so this is a bit more awkward than I had hoped uh, you see that little sort of ferrule there I think that's supposed to just sit inside of this bit for the, the tuner. Uh, I'm going to have fun trying to get that back in, aren't I? Trying to get that lined up right, okay. I'll try not to touch it. It seems to be, uh, this is unusual that the mechanism is actually screwed into the front of the case. Um, there seems to be some plastic clips that possibly push that part off on the tuner dial there's a lamp flapping about there that I think goes in there can't see them go anywhere else that'll be for the stereo indicator I would think um, little bit of dust down here not too much but it's all this crap at the bottom really I want, I want to uh, I want to get out I think I'm just going to clean the tyres. I think these have probably been replaced at some point, maybe. They look all right. They feel all right as well. Uh, yeah, I really do wonder if they've been, if they've been changed. I think it's just that counter belt that wasn't, wasn't so hot. I say those tyres. Can't feel that one there, but I felt much worse on machines that I've worked on recently okay so that red and black wire was off that microphone i think someone has been in this before because i think there's a screw missing there that black screw i don't remember taking that out and also i noticed that when i took these two screws out they just sort of came out really easily and it's because the posts i can see now the posts have got i think have either got splits or it's like the wrong screws have been put in there they look a bit chewed out so I think someone has been in this before and probably done the belts um, which is why it doesn't look too bad but probably didn't have one for the counter belt maybe um, but there's I think there should be one there I can see a mark around where it would have been so there's a yeah transport screw missing there I had to um, cut the wires off the meter because I don't know what, what they were soldered with, but it was almost like glue. 
but I went to cut the orange one and instead cut the bloody tag off. I'm not able to get that meter out, so as I say, I think it is glued, and I, one of these clips is broken as well. Uh, it goes on the side, but it's it's not going anywhere. I'm pretty sure that is uh, glued in there, so I can't kind of dunk the entire thing because obviously I'll, I'll wreck the meter. I think the um, front glass can come off, well, the plastic can come off by pushing these clips out. Um, but again, I don't think I'm going to need to do that. It's really just this bottom half I'm more concerned about. The rest of it will just get uh, cleaned with a cloth. Okie dokie, back to the Hitachi. Um, I had to take a couple of days off trying to film this because um, I've come down with a cold and I'm getting over it, but for a couple of days I sounded like a movie villain. Um, so it would have made a slightly unsettling change of tone. <laughs> anyway, um, been washing the casing out. That's come up really nicely. Just done a little bit of detailing. Uh, there'll be a bit more to do yet, but um, just to get um, a few little paint spots and stuff off there, and then it'll get a final polish and whatnot before um, it's done. But yeah, it's not come up bad at all. That always bugs me if I find like emulsion spots, white emulsion spots on old stuff, like it, in the same era that people were like carving their postcodes and social security numbers into stuff that they owned because they were so precious about it getting stolen. They didn't give a crap about leaving it in a room when they were <laughs> emulsioning the ceiling and so much stuff. Radios, keyboards, record players, all sorts. I found them with the little white emulsion spots splattered all over them and it just drives me up the wall. Um, anyway, yes, all that's been uh, cleaned out. Um, still a couple of little bits right in the corners and stuff like that because they're very hard to get to but overall it's, it's much, much better than it, is, uh, than it was. Um, the back has been cleaned as well. That was, I just reached down for that. Um, that's not come quite as good on the back. Um, I suspect somebody's tried to clean this with something before and actually made it worse. So it doesn't really look all that different, but I just tried, sort of tried to make sure there's no loose stuff really. I don't think we're ever going to use this battery compartment anyway. One of the springs I've removed completely, this one, I will probably do the same because um, it pretty much just crumbled as I went to take it out anyway. So. Yeah, I don't think there's, apart from replacing these springs, I don't think there's going to be any chance really of making this battery compartment any better without harsh chemicals and stuff. And I don't think it's ever really going to get used anyway. And because it's got a nine volt input on the side, if you wanted to run it off a power bank or something, I don't think it'd be that impossible. So other than that inside, yeah, it's just much more presentable and sort of future proof. So um, I'm happy with that so far. So. Oh, the handle's been done as well. So um, I've inked the speakers. It wasn't critical to do it on something like this because they're not ever so visible, but when I took them out, they're all stripy. They're still a little bit stripy, but it doesn't matter, but it's just going to make them blend in a bit better. I've got the bottle of ink. It cost me nothing to do it, so um, I thought I'd um, get some of the muck out of them and give them a bit of a spruce up. So we've come to the point now of trying to get all this back into the front so I'm going to rearrange here a little bit and see if I can make that happen also around the uh, deck and around the chassis uh, I've been cleaning as well so um, all the heads the pinch roller and the capstan have all been cleaned they weren't too bad the capstan was a bit grotty um, the pinch roller was a little bit as well so the pinch roller has had um, platinum clean and um, that feels really good um, the heads were pretty clean um, counter I just clean with some wet wipes you have to be really careful when cleaning counters because it's really easy to take the paint and numbers off um, but the wet wipes just seem to spruce it up a little bit um, it's not perfect again it's the plastic that they're made of I can see around the button as well it kind of goes gray and foggy I might just give the button a polish with some plastic polish before um, I fully reassemble that actually and around the chassis I just again use some wet wipes and some of my degrease that I use just get some balls of muck out and what have you so it's way more around the switches so it's just way more presentable now for sticking back in the front so let's see if we can just pop these out of the way you know what's extremely annoying about this the magnets keep sticking together <laughs> it's infuriating and I think, yeah i'm gonna have to try and give myself a bit more reach here to get these near to where they're supposed to mount because these wires are pulling do you know what stuff it i'll clip it and resolder it it's just going to make it easier and safer because i don't want to 
slip and paste the speaker or anything. Okay, you might notice a bit of a jump here. It's nearly done. What's going on? Well, I've had a pretty rough cold uh, this week, so I've actually been working on this, but I found it quite difficult to speak uh, until now. I spent a lot of this week sounding like a movie villain. So um, I have been taking footage of this, and I will cut in some of that and just talk over what I've been doing. Um, definitely uh, got the impression as I mentioned earlier that uh, this has been worked on before and I've got a bit more evidence of that going through it um, like I mentioned earlier the belts uh, that uh, seemed pretty fresh I'm pretty sure they've been changed I think someone's had the board out and done the two main drive belts but didn't do that counter belt perhaps they didn't have it in their set or they didn't have something that would fit Perhaps they didn't deem it that important. It is a little bit awkward to get to if the chassis is in place. But I just found, um, I went through my stash of belts and I found a belt that fit that counter okay. Um, and I've left it at that because um, those belts that are in it, I think have probably been changed relatively recently. They're definitely not original. Um, the original rubber as well, it was actually in fairly good condition for these. Um, the critical point on these mechanisms, as I've covered in the past, is that uh, this uh, idler tyre that is part of the clutch assembly that has to have really good grip and the little brass roller right down at the bottom of the clutch assembly that presses against it must be clean. Um, I do have a source for these and I have replaced them on every single one that I've done apart from this one which with some um, platinum clean rubber restorer um, made it work really well um, didn't really have too much issue with it at all. The other one on the other reel is used as a brake and sometimes you can get away with swapping the tyres over uh, if one's got uh, less wear than the other. Um, but in this case I didn't feel that I needed to do that at all. When they get really bad, like I've got some examples here, there's one that's split and there's the one that you won't know but it just feels like plastic. There's just no pliability, no grip left on it at all. So if they get in that state, then they're not going to do their job and the clutch won't work properly and the take up tension won't be right. It is critical because if that's not working properly, it will eat your tapes. So um, that's that tire. The tire in the middle is the winding tire uh, for fast forward and rewind. Unfortunately, I haven't found a source of these and it, it is a, an awkward point on these decks that um, they don't always have the strongest rewind or fast forward if that tire is quite worn or dried out. Again, I did clean this one with some platinum clean. Um, the rewind and fast forward, and this is okay. Uh, on tapes that are a little bit stiff, it will stall a little bit, um, but without kind of replacing that tire really, um, you never get a perfect rewind or fast forward on these, but for most purposes, it's fine. Um, I did uh, find again a, a bit more evidence that someone's been in this before because I realized that uh, there are some missing screws in the chassis itself. Uh, I looked back in the service manual and found that uh, here, here and here there should be three screws according to the service manual. They were completely missing in this and there were those two right down here that looked like the actual holes in the posts. It looked like they'd been pulled out or something, the holes were all widened out. So I ended up finding one screw, I went through my stash of screws, I found one screw just way down there. Way down there that was enough um, just to hold that in place. It, I didn't find a matching one to do the other side unfortunately but being as that's next to the volume control which is going to be the most used control it's perfectly secure it's fine. So um, I took one of the um, black screws and put it back in the deck underneath where I pointed out earlier that one was missing and then I found um, a couple of other replacement screws in my stash that would fit that, that and that and uh, it's all secured in nicely now, it all seems fine. At first I thought the uh, actual back casing held the chassis in, uh, which with a bit of a rejig of the design could have probably done that, but that's not how they did this. So um, you can see I've still got the uh, wiring dress to do. Um, I think one of the little retainers at the bottom somewhere is cracked. I think it's this one's cracked on one side, so I might have to just take those wires out and bob a bit of super glue on that before I do the wire dress. But um, yeah, everything's sort of bolted back in. I've done um, a head alignment, uh, which wasn't that far off. Obviously, the, the mechanism's all been cleaned out. Uh, but as I said on this video, I wanted to focus really on what's going on electrically with this. And if you've got one of these absolutely in these positions, 
keep an eye on those capacitors if they're the purple jacket ones um, the big ones the Panasonic's get them out of there have a look around see if there is any corrosion there is some corrosion on the tracers here but it doesn't seem to be affecting uh, that so much but if you get any slightest amount of corrosion around these printed resistors the um, actual track on those not the carbon resistor itself but the track either side of it is it might be solder or something I'm not sure what they've used but if it gets the slightest bit corroded or even if you try and scrape it clean it's just gone it just goes through so they're the point to watch out for um, even all the switches and everything were pretty clean on this this has obviously come out much cleaner now that it's all been stripped and washed even the chassis um, I realize that that can if you take the wire dress off that can come out completely and um, that can be washed didn't have too much trouble getting that tuning indicator to um, uh, to line up at all I just sort of lined it up with one of the uh, screw posts and turned the chassis and the um, yeah the chassis and the um, tuning capacitor on the back of the board to the same position and then drop them straight back in and it seemed to work first time I was a bit nervous about that but if you get everything in alignment and just carefully pop it down uh, it seems to go down all right so yeah I think the last thing to do is after uh, doing the wire dress we'll get the back back on the tops had uh, a bit of back to black as has the handle um, I'm not sure if it's a plastic or a paint but the top was just leaving weird marks on it and even the light it's it's not perfect the whole thing's not perfect but after the back to black and after cleaning all these out again still not perfect but that's not what we were going for uh, it's much better all the dials have had um, a bath in the ultrasonic cleaner to get all the gunk out as does the tuner knob uh, as usual um, I didn't as mentioned earlier take these out because squeezing those clips together just felt like oh, they were they were going to break so I left them in place and just cleaned underneath them so uh, much more presentable the counter is a little bit sticky on its reset and this button I don't know what plastic they make these out of but I've tried everything to get that back to a, a blacker plastic and nothing works it's like it's got a weird chalky coating leaching out of it as if it's, it's not sticky but as if it's painted I don't think they're painted I think it's just the counter wheels are doing a similar thing I think it's just um, the plastic they're made of I don't want to put any grease or anything around the counter because again they're made of a weird plastic I think they just crumble it's not gonna be critical to this machine as long as it functions and doesn't stall the tape mechanism as long as it's moving when it's playing fast forwarding that's all kind of part of the experience that's all we want from this it's not a perfect machine it's not supposed to be a perfect machine it's just so supposed to be clean and functional uh, and serviced so that's all we want from that so yeah I'll do this wire dress get the back back on reconnect the antenna and the power supply and everything oh I need to check that um, mains input don't I to see what was going on with that before I put the uh, back back on it we'll do that next I managed to get the power supply to work from AC properly I've actually replaced the rectifier diodes um, it was another one that went on a bit of a goose chase here partly because on the underside um, they were all covered with glue that holds this uh, all this wiring on so uh, I had to scrape through that and go through a lot of cotton swabs and acetone to get all the glue away and the uh, dental pick and when I actually tested the diodes um, they tested okay and uh, looking on the meter I was actually getting 9 volts output and when I looked at the scope I was getting a, a, an unsmoothed but rectified wave coming out of there but carefully looking at one of the pairs of diodes one of the originals I don't think it's this one I think it's the other one that's gone somewhere it looks like it's got tiny cracks in the glass and these are pretty corroded so I think um, they were showing okay uh, at the low sort of pulse voltage that the meter tests at but when I actually tried pulling current through them they're just one of them was just collapsing I think so um, replacing them all uh, sorted it out there is some corrosion at this filter the, these are basically um, ceramic capacitors sort of back to back and I think there's some corrosion at the bottom of this one but because they're ceramic I've no real worry about them shorting I, I think this one's barely in the circuit now to be honest but I don't think it's that important um, I think it's just for if you're using a 9 volt power supply and they just 
filter a bit of noise out but um, it seems to be working fine they're also the legs are a little bit folded over on them and I think if I keep trying to mess about trying to pull things out heat this up pull the wiring on and off and whatnot I'm going to start lifting tracks um, they're just really awkward so I'm just going to leave that as it is I've cleaned it up it functions it works um, so now I can reconnect the aerial wires and get this back together so this is the bad pair of diodes and I don't know how well it will show that the uh, top of that one at the, the one at the bottom there closest to my hand there is definitely uh, some damage a crack in the glass and I think the other one as well swap them around that one to me looks compromised too I think on the outside of it yeah but you can see that red side they don't look right it's weird that they will test fine on the meter but I think as soon as um, currents passed whoa we'll focus um, there we go as soon as any current is passed um, they just fail I think this pair is alright but you can see the corrosion on there so um, yeah it was best just to uh, junk those and replace them so all in all I think this is everything that's come out of here um, now not all of this is bad some of it was just uh, things that I removed and I wanted to make sure that if I'd removed something on one channel I wanted to replace the opposite channel the same so that they matched um, some of these will test all right again things like this big nichicon here but looking around the bottom of the seal and around where it was on the board there was definitely some corrosion these little nightmares um, you can see on the bottom of them they're definitely uh, not right and I think it was just a couple of these that actually I think it was this one with the glue at the bottom that measured terribly there was bad diodes little plastic clip there that um, not really any point in gluing that back on that was on the back of the um, meter but the meter seems to be glued to the front panel anyway so it's not going anywhere um, the aerial tip I found out that it was a, an M2 thread that little screw thread that was sticking out I've got some M2 nuts and I managed to screw a couple on there and then just put two bits of heat shrink the first bit's got some adhesive inside it so it's not going anywhere it's going to stay there um, doesn't look exactly like the original ones but at least again from a distance and for something to get hold of uh, it functions because it's quite a long antenna this um, I'll close this out with a bit of a demo on a, a wider shot of this of course but um, it's nearly 10 o'clock at night at this point so I'm gonna have to wait until tomorrow to do that to demonstrate the radio um, yeah it's come up really nice I must admit uh, when I first sort of saw this it's not really my usual sort of style and I thought ah, oh, it's it, you know it, the owner appreciates it but I thought it's probably not like the kind that I usually prefer but um, I think I'm, I've got to admit you know now that um, I've cleaned it all up and everything it does look quite smart um, it's a fairly sort of basic featured unit and um, it's certainly not a powerhouse it's certainly not a base monster um, compared to obviously the 81 and 82 90s that I've been doing it doesn't have the power of those for example but quite interesting when I, again I went back to the service manual there's a whole section in the service manual that's talking about the wide stereo I've done a few of them where they've got the stereo wide switch this has just got it hardwired in so um, it's got that kind of expansive stereo which you'd have had no idea of course when uh, one speaker didn't work properly that it even had that feature um, but it's just permanently on <laughs> on this so when it's tuned to a good radio station and it's playing a cassette well the stereo is quite impressive um, so it makes for a pretty nice radio as I say this antenna is massive so if I took it outside I imagine the reception should be pretty good question for you are you having a takeaway or are you cooking uh, takeaway what takeaway well I'm I'm pushing for pizza and oh no don't leave me we've only known each other 30 seconds say that again I'm pushing for a pizza He's quite keen on a Chinese, so we'll probably end up having a Chinese, to be honest. And there was a threat to burn them out. Of the Hello, Andrew. Welcome to find out soon. Davies, Justin Hermitz was the composer. 
I'll let you make what you will of that.